realizations, insight, uh, understanding of insight and uh, realization. Realization both means making something real, actual, and also a kind of like an awakening. Mm. It's quite it's like different from getting something, it's like realizing something. Yeah. So you wake up to something, you wake up to the way it is. Mm. And, you know, how is it? So, you know, it is just the process of consciousness is uh, you know, various perceptions, forms, sights, sounds, inclinations, moving, arising, moving, forming, shifting through space, through an open space, through a, an awareness. And of course the, you know, the big thing is how to not lose the sense of the space, the context, or I call it the field, by getting uh, stuck in the content and also how not to just ignore or dismiss the content and get spaced out. <laughs> so the field the field of Dharma may be spacious, but it's not spaced out. And there's this interesting balance between acknowledging form, sensation, perception, ideas, opinions, feeling, mm. Emotion, confusing, powerful, poignant, distressing, delightful, all of that as it is, like the wave breaking and the field that that breaks into and it dissolves back into. And that really is the, my sense, the <coughs> nub of the practice, how to not space out into kind of like, oh, well, it's all changing, so what? <laughs> and yet, also, the other extremes, you get things that arise, you just get, you know, stabbed by or, or stuck on or resisting or spinning out on, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? How's that going to happen? You know, how, what, what, uh, yada, yada, you know, thing, mind jabbers when it gets stuck on something, how to, this is arising. What does it take to be with the arising? Yeah. Feel the impact of the arising. How embarrassing it is. Yeah. Open to that. And feeling that which can open to it. Mm. Mm. So this is partly a subtle body sense, somatic sense, something releases, relaxes in your body and naturally of course it's a heart sense it's not a thought thoughts can help us to remember that but it's not a thought thoughts can't do that uh, it's a heart sense a sense of what awareness is about and awareness is uh, empathic <coughs> So, or the other, call it, are they parasympathetic, which means, you know, sympathetic is you feel something. Something touches you, disturbs you, you know, something technically outside or something, a thought comes in and you get this resonance. Parasympathetic is how you feel about that, how you feel about feeling. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's kind of one step back from that. Can I be with the feeling of panic or the feeling of uncertainty or feeling of boredom? You know, how that. So you come to that point, actually, where something we, we can interpret as, oh, he said this to me and he was so unpleasant the other day, and what am I supposed to do with that? You get to the point of, no, no, just let's get the story right down to one point, which is always hurt. <laughs> You know, uh, whether we react with anger or fear or 
whatever. Oh, that point. How are you with that? How are you with that point? Mm. Dukkha. That's parasympathetic. See, so the the point is the sympathetic, where it's the feeling occurs, and then the parasympathetic or the empathic is how you, how I, what is to be with that, and that, so that empathic sense is going to be compassionate. And what it does, it looks to find it, how to arrive at wholeness. Whereas dukkha fragments, breaks us up, doesn't it? You know, into me and you and tomorrow and yesterday and what I should do and what am I going to do about my uncle or dog or whatever it is. And these little topics come up. We get seized on these topics. So we, we get very localized and embedded in that localized experience, that, that form. Okay, the form is, you know, your dog is sick or whatever, your uncle is going mad. Uh, uh-huh. Right, no, not to deny that. And then the feeling of that, feeling helpless, overwhelmed, can't manage this. How are you? How can you be with that? Is this something that other people experience? Of course it is. Otherwise there wouldn't be any word for it, would it? So we... Oh. And just what it takes finding ground, groundedness, body, recollection, use of grounding recollection like mortality or unsatisfactoriness or heart grounding, grounding in a sense of compassion, in a sense of opening to that. Oh, you know, there's no real conceptual answer. It's not like we suddenly fix everything, but we become bigger and are able to allow that to flood through and the reactions stop. When the reactions stop and the you know stuckness stops, then from that place of resolution, then it may be that a thought comes up of, oh I should do this or don't worry about that or That's just an idea, so what? Hmm? Well, that comes after. After the cessation of suffering, after the stopping of the agitation, then comes the clarity. You know, the clarity as to what to do or what to not do or how it is. And you can't really... And the thing is that, you know, often the actual thought is incredibly simple, like, life's like that. (laughs) Or don't worry about it. You know, it's very simple. But you can't use that thought to skip the process. You can go through the process to get to these very simple thoughts because that thought is not just an idea, it's a realization. See, now, if we don't have the realization, we can use the thoughts like everything's impermanent, We all come and go, we're all mortal, life's like this. But it's not real, it's an idea. It's a a good idea, but it's still an idea. Because you haven't gone through the process of feeling. (laughs) And, you know, it's true, but you haven't haven't realized it. To go through the process of feeling, it's like you take it into your body, into your heart, and you swallow it. And then the thought that comes after that, that's real. That's a realization. And of course, this is where it's, it's, it's tricky because, you know, the, certainly the thoughts, the ideas, the messages that are placed about Dhamma, they're all true. You know, and we can know them, and yet we haven't realized it yet. To realize it is a bit of a... Uh, process sometimes a little bit messy (laughs) to you know let the feeling be felt why am I like this 
Mm. Come sometimes a point just of hopelessness. Why am I, why am I always stuck in this? Mm. And you come to the empathic sense of, yeah, yeah, stuck is like this, isn't it? Stuck in doubt, stuck in slow, stuck in habit, stuck in addictive things, stuck in self flagellation, stuck in life. <laughs> like this, isn't it? You go, oh, everybody is gets to this place, don't they? Hmm? Very acutely. Oh, it's like this. Of course, sometimes it's not overwhelming. You know, it's just some irritating little silly thought that keeps cropping up in your mind. You go to the empathic sense of, I'm so fed up with this stupid mind. <laughs> It'd shut up, you know. Uh -huh. I feel like giving up, don't we? I feel like I'd just like to give up and just veg out, just switch on something and kind of, you know, just gorge on some trashy pulp to <laughs> I don't have to be awake for. <laughs> you know, you get those points, you know, fed up with trying to work with your mind, you know, just like to just, you know, veg out. Okay. It's like this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's very helpful to really, you know, all those kind of ghosts and skeletons. You know, this is nothing out of the order. It's not beyond the Dhamma. Yeah. Are you aware of that? How it feels? How you feel about experiencing such a thing, ashamed of yourself, whatever. You get some nice experience, you get excited about it. You know, oh, wow, I really got it together now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, letting the, you know, the happiness or the conviction also just cool into something steady and, you know, stay awake, mm -hmm. keep the door open. You know, you know, doing a meditation practice is, is you know, clearing, clinging, grasping that that blocks that that process. You see, you know, something comes up and we resist it or we speculate about it. We get stuck. We don't process through to that place of opening, releasing, realizing. Mm. You know, you know. So you know, thoughts or ideas or plans or worries or joys or whatever. They come they, we kind of get to that place where it's happening, but don't actually follow through to the knowing of that, to the awareness of that, to the how is that? I mean, kind of stick on the form that which has arisen, and then the various sankharas, activities, speculations, and so on, take over. And then the thing, you get this kind of whole, you know, introspective obsession comes in. The process hasn't been taken through. So naturally, you know, you kind of, Purification practices, renunciation practices, concentration practices that you know try to mm, get back to the breath, get back to the walk, get back to your meditation theme, so untangle from that. And you know Grasping has a basis, 
<clears throat> the basis is tanha, craving. Craving as a basis. Basis is wrong seeing, ignorance, or seeing things wrongly. And seeing things wrongly is we see permanence or continuity. There's this and then there's that, and then there's this and there's that, and then we're going on, continuity, permanence. We keep reading things against that background, things are continuing, I will be, there's going to be a future, I was, I will be. That's the uh, conventional understanding of the unawakened. We see things against the background of solidity. I'm here, things are fixed, things are stable, this will last, he'll be here tomorrow, I'll be here tomorrow, you know. Solidity, something definite. Uh, and we see things against the background of self happening to me. We see things against the background of there should be something conclusive, happy, satisfying. The, <clears throat> so you know, looking at these, some of these characteristics You know, the vipalasas called uh, seeing the constant in the inconstant, seeing the um, conclusive or satisfactory in the inconclusive, seeing the attractive in that which can't actually provide one with the pleasure that it suggests, and seeing selfhood in something that has no real lasting entity. These are the called the vipalasas or the distortions that, you know, they, they give us the, the finer detail of what it means, ignorance means. Or not, avijja means. It means you see, not that you don't see anything, you see things wrongly. The mind sees things wrongly or, or interprets things wrongly or has a wrong assumption, a wrong underlying basis. Yeah. And upon that basis of solidity and continuity, things build, build up for a while and then they tumble over and then they build up and tumble over. So we're constantly building houses that fall down, abiding places that crumble and then trying to make it not crumble and it crumbles, something wrong, build it more steady, get my life together you know, get it established, fixed, and so forth. And, oh, that's gone wrong. Well, fix that bit, stabilize that bit. Actually, it's just process. And the aim of the life is to live, you can almost crunch it down to one topic, insecurity. To live in insecurity rather than to live in apparent or attempted security. I was Actually, there isn't any final security. Is there? There's kind of temporary, partial securities that take quite a bit of effort to hold them together. To live in insecurity is both you know, frightening and joyful. It means there's no tomorrow. It's not certain. You don't really know who you are. What people think of you, you don't know. Not certain. How well you're doing, you don't, couldn't quite say. What state you, stage you're at, you don't know. <laughs> Whether this is going to work for you, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> is Buddha Dharma, is that really the right thing for you? Perhaps, but then again. <laughs> yeah. Because actually, this is the path to joy. Because <laughs> it clears, clears the basis 
of that grasping. You see, if there isn't anything that could be permanent, solid, self, substantial, satisfying, and you really realize it, you don't just think it, thinking it's miserable, <laughs> but realizing it, oh, relief. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why it's like this. Oh, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I'm all right. You know, it's like this. You're like this until you, until you die. Or maybe then you, maybe you go on being like this. Who knows? <laughs> but you think, you know, it doesn't really... Uh, it's a realization, isn't it? And the kind of freedom of that. Not having to be, no name, build up houses anymore. The Buddha's realization, house builder, you are known, the ridge pole is broken, you will not build a house again. Here we are building buildings, building cooties, building blocks and so forth. And they're always breaking up, aren't they? I mean, we've got maintenance people working every day of the year, patching up things that we built, solid rock, concrete, cement, steel girders, nails, screws, and they're just breaking up. <laughs> yeah. And what about this body, you know? But realization is a little more than just a factual statement. It's something you you get it in your heart. Yeah. And we're doing this really. This is where you know the enlightenment factors. You get sati mindfulness investigation. How is it? Hmm. Energy. Bring your energy into that. Don't be reluctant about it. How is it? Keep inquiring. Not what you should do or what will happen if, but how is it? How is it now? Mm-hmm. So that's the entrance to the field of the present direct experience. Not what can I be, what will I be, what have I been, how can I manage that in the future, what do other people think, but how is it now for you, for me? Hear this. Trembly, not quite formed, sort of half formed, bits not quite there. Mm -hmm. Open spaces not quite filled in. Something pulling, wanting to know, to to be filled, to adopt something, to finalise, to get it clear. Is it like that? Some happiness, yeah, some clarity, and some sort of slightly foggy bits. Is it like this? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like that. It seems to me it's like that. And when we just see, oh, and you realize, well, maybe it's, isn't it? Pretty much like this always. You know, that if it's not my fog, it's you know not located internally. But it'd be the fog of what do you do about the monastery in the future, or how do who's going to come next year, or are we enough people here, or what's going to happen if the work monk leaves, or what well, are the nuns in the community? How's that going to grow? What's happening to the lay people? What about the hydro plant? What about the, for the financial position, it's always something kind of... <laughs> and you go, well, I don't know about that. Well, maybe it could be. Should train you. Not, not ideal, is it? It's not really solid yet. It's not really quite finalised, fixed. is isn't properly established yet. <laughs> How long do you, does that go on for? You begin to... Dawn on you, <laughs> dawns on me that no, it's that's that's just, that's called established, <laughs> established in uncertainty. <laughs> Get it? 
Uh-huh. Can you open to that? Yeah. Think something else has got it better, more stable, or just not talking about it. So it's a big, really quite a raw nerve. Stability, security, and uh, you know the kind of flip point of the Dhamma is when those resources, sati, mindfulness, investigation, energy, balanced energy, grounded, steady not retracting, not rushing forward, composed energy, mind sort of flips or opens, you know, joy. Joy, what's that doing here? Hmm? Rapture, piti. It's like every moment you're stepping off the edge of the world. Every moment. It's just every moment is tumbling off the edge of the world. And we're in that wonderful tumble, that wonderful tumbling on. It's like a parachute, but there's no earth to ground. You just go. <laughs> and you're in that. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is tighten up because then you're going to hit. So this is the experience, rapture. Now when we're taking it down to a refined field, like breathing in, breathing out, like you were saying, you know, you know if, if, if that breath is the last one, can we just let it go and not ask for another one? Could it, you know, could it have that degree of release? Mm. When you take, when the in breath comes, could it be the first one, the only one that's going to be? Mm. That's that's the shaving down of, of time. That helps to undercut the sense of. And again, and again, and again, here we are again, and another day, and yet again, I've heard this before, and so we're going on, you know, walking up and down, how long are we doing this, 20 minutes, 25, 40 an hour, oh, gracious me, another, this, up and down, another week of this retreat to go, and, and after retreat, I'll be, get out and do something useful, and find, you know, continuity, you know, so this is, this is a subtle enemy, because it, blocks the field of openness. And is it true, even? You know, if you ever find yourself running downstairs, you know, with a plan, oh, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to get to the so-and-so, so-and-so, head full of ideas, and, you know, running down the stairs, slip, crash, you hit your head on the wall. Where did that go? <laughs> you know, where did all that preoccupation go. Seems so solid and because it, you know, and it's felt, isn't it? Uh, shaving down time. So this rapture is the pivoting point where realization process seems to you know get a sense of it because it's one thing about it that experience, that sense is oh rather than me holding it it holds me the dhamma holds me i'm in something where that controlling planning can stop because it's going to hold me. Dhamma holds those who uphold it. Mm. Meditation theme. I mean, the sense 
the arising, say, of a breath or a sensation within a field that no longer expects another one. Is no longer trying to get it right. Is no longer trying to accumulate some experience or another. A certain innocence of perception. Just as a model within this very safe and contained boundary, what it would be like to be that light. And then taking that uh, pasadi, <clears throat> taking that quality and through the body, through the mind, smoothing out the lumps. <clears throat> There's quite a lot of lumps around. Mm. The bodily lumps, we get these contractions in the body, seizing up in the ribs, the chest, the throat, belly, little tight knots, breathing through, not trying to change them or fix them, but just to allow them to sense this lightness. Mm. Yeah. Breathing through the mind, it's lumps there preoccupations, self-images, karmic tangles, the ganta, they're called, knots. Buddha was always quite um, vivid in his language. He's called the knots, the knots of views, the knots of sensuality, the uh, the knots of becoming. Interesting, isn't it? But that, when you meditate, that's kind of what they feel like. Is when you get back, instead of just getting into the detail of it, you step back and this whole tangle of well, what's that? This is awareness can see, can realize these uh, stories as tangles, knots. And you, no way you're going into it, there's no way you're going to really clear that. Mm. And yet one wants to go into it, to clear it out, to tidy it up. Doesn't happen. <coughs> Realising that, dukkha, if you like, a sense in which the mind can widen, soften, into awareness and the knot can dissolve. We're not in it, not caught in it. Life is knotty. Breathing through that calming, smoothing, smoothing out the field of awareness. This is how oh, you, know, you look at those enlightenment factors, sati, mindfulness, investigation, piti, rapture, pasadi, smoothing out. Gives rise to samadhi, unification, and then equanimity. You know, there's a pretty good team. In terms of our own resource, is there anything, you know, more? Is that team enough? Isn't that team pretty good foundation within which to place one's tangle?
instead of hope, plan, so on. In some ways it's, from the conventional point of view, it's incredibly insecure, because we have to give up the plan, and in one sense it's very, very secure. Kema, it's called the word is Kema. One of the epithets of Nibbana is the secure. But secure is not a thing, not an object. Secure is the field, the field of those factors. They act like a safety net, you could say. But it's not an object, it's a quality of a fully unified and resolute, confident awareness. And every one of our you know, tangles and uh, pieces rightly held will help us to unfold that field And along the way, we'll probably learn some skillful means to facilitate that. It's sitting, standing, walking, talking. Uh, the particular upaya, or skillful means we take on. Renunciation, compassion, picking things up that we don't want to pick up, putting things down that we'd rather pick up. <laughs> Giving up things that we'd rather feel steadied by uh, yeah. yeah but there's that possibility and uh, you know sometimes it's just you come down and you sit and one just you know you recollect the Buddha maybe that's it you know well, you have this Buddha statue here, Buddha Rupa. Not carrying a lot, is he? <laughs> and yet, he's carrying the whole world. You know, it's a very open chest, isn't it? It's a very open fullness to that position. He's not, you know, curling up in a ball somewhere. He's very open. The eyes are half open. And he's happy. In some ways, he's carrying the whole sentient universe. In another way, he's not carrying a thing. Centered in that awakening, in that realization. Sometimes, you know, because, because awareness is empathic, sometimes you sit there and look at that Buddha. And just take in the image, the symbol, the feeling of that. Take that into the heart, to the body. Sit like a Buddha. <coughs> Don't think about it, though. <laughs> it's not a think, thinking, sitting, thinking like a, thinking about sitting like a Buddha. Well, the shoulder, how's the hands? What are the knees, the legs? Can you do it if you're a female? Maybe you've got to be a male to sit like a Buddha. No, 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 maybe, you know, no, don't, don't, don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> you know. And so I just kind of bring one's body into that. You realize particularly this opening around the chest. That sense of, this is where the pity rapture occurs from here, you know, the chest up through the face and so forth sense of yeah you know and then steadying breathing that through the body mm. upaya skillful means devotion recollection meditation renunciation mm. communities 
they're all they're all can be used in this way <clears throat> and we start to look at what bring those crucial bit is what it helps the arising of the enlightenment factors mindfulness investigation energy rapture calming soothing collectedness unification equanimity ability to receive feeling without getting knocked around by it what helps those and there's a sequence there you can't really have the equanimity until you've got that fundamental grounding effect of sati, mindfulness, here. Now, yeah. it's always going to require or give rise to some inquiry, some investigation. What is now happening? What's the point? See if we can trim it down to, you know, how am I with that particular experience? <clears throat> 